trying to get to the bottom of helping people to optimize um, what it is that they do. And I guess that, that, that in some ways I think is how I'm different than some doctors, is that it's not so much about fixing the acute problems. It really is about optimization, about taking somebody who's generally well but could be better. And I think a lot of us are like that. Well, we're generally well. We don't have a, a disease right now. But, you know, we're not, uh, we're not operating at peak performance. And I think when you can, from a health perspective, when you can get people to be operating at a peak performance, their nutrition is good, they're, they're exercising regularly, you know, you've got their, their hormones are balanced, their, their um, you know, preventative health stuff has been taken care of, then I think you're, you're coming from a much stronger place of, of, of being able to build upon that to be holist holistically well in your relationships, in your, in your spiritual side, in your creative expression, all these other things that make us... In, in, in owning pink, we, we, we call them things that we own, owning balance, owning peace, owning creativity, um, and so on. So it's really, it's really about balancing all of that, which we kind of were talking about before, how do you balance all of those pieces of yourself. But I think they're all facets that are necessary for a true holistic wellness. Amen to that. I mean, uh, <laughs> I agree completely that when I don't feel, to me, sleep is so important. That's part of yeah. my balance. And if I don't feel rested, I don't feel like doing anything else. And when I feel rested, I can take on the world. And right. I think in this society right now there are so many people who are operating sleep deprived yes and that's as a physician i bet you see that all the time all the time fatigue and low energy these are two of the most common things that i see the other thing that i see most commonly is mood dis mood disorders depression anxiety you know when you're coming from a place of being really anxious or really sad it's very hard to be well in other ways. And so I do a lot of work with um, you know, natural neurotransmitter balancing and really kind of helping to optimize brain chemistry. Um, so that again, so that you feel good, you've got your health mojo at least, so that you can kind of work up within the system to, um, to, to really live a passionate life, the life that you've always wanted to live. I agree completely. The term integrative medicine is, is wonderful because it integrates every piece of yourself and like you said if you're feeling sad or fatigued the rest of your life isn't going to work very well so you have to integrate all that i i'm glad you're doing that work um well, i'd like hmm? and i work with a lot of other providers too because you know again I, i'm really i'm an expert in certain facets of that but some people, for example, some people need to see a Reiki provider. Some people need to see an acupuncturist. Some people need to see uh, an intuitive. Um, so, you know, I think there are lots of different, and, and a lot of what I do is kind of intuitive work to try to help figure out what might what might serve someone. You know, do they, do they need a therapist? Do they need, um, you know, what kinds of, of things that are out there? Are, um, do they need yoga? You know, there's, there's a lot of different avenues via which people can can get to that place. And so I, I kind of try to at least guide people along the path a little bit. Excellent. Well, I'd like to hear about a couple more of your slashes. Um, I'd like to hear about your upcoming art tour, the Woman Inside Project. I know yeah. it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and my understanding is that you've been casting women with breast cancer and shining the light on the woman that lies within. What inspired this project? What has it been like to work with these women? Oh my goodness, it's been an amazing project. I've been working on this for five years now, and it's the first the first exhibition of the tour is starting in January, and I'm actually doing the first show with another artist who's also who is a photographer and a breast cancer survivor. Her name is Nancy Bellin, and we're calling the show "She Lives." because it's really not about breast cancer. It's about the resiliency of the human spirit. Um, but it's been really a wonderful project. The inspiration for it came, um, interestingly enough, I, I was aware of the fact that there were these belly casting kits that you can buy when you're pregnant, mm. uh, that you can use you know, medical plaster to create these plaster casts of the body. You know, People do this so that they can kind of memorialize this body, and I did it when I was pregnant. Um, because you know you may only have it once. I, I only have one child, and you know I probably won't have more. And so that, it's it's that one experience. But I had a woman who I, I had to tell that she had breast cancer when she was pregnant. And so the idea came to me. She had this body, and she had these breasts, and she was about to have this child. What if I, what if I cast her just to to memorialize this? Because as soon as the baby was born, she was going to have to have a bilateral mastectomy. 
and so um, I, you know, I did that. I did this cast of, of her body, and it, it inspired this whole project of well, they don't have to be pregnant. That I could I could cast anybody who had breast cancer, and since then I've come to think I can cast anybody. It's really not about breast cancer. But what I've done is I have these women come to my house, and I and I cover them with with warm plaster and create this plaster mold of their torso. And while they're doing that, I interview them about their breast cancer, which is, you know, kind of the, the conversation starts sort of clinically. They'll tell me, well, I had stage 2B breast cancer and I had to get, you know, a mastectomy and radiation and chemotherapy and I got tamoxifen and on and on and they sort of start clinically. But then it'll go into other things that happened in their life, like, well, and then my son was in a skateboarding accident when... You know, when I was recovering from my surgery and he ended up in the ICU and my incision came wide open and, and they start telling me these other facets of what, what was going on in their lives. And by this time, usually the cast is done and I take the cast off and send them to the shower to get all the plaster pieces off. And when they come out of the shower and get dressed, I hold up the cast and I say, you know, this is what the world sees of you. Now tell me about the rest of you. And then I would basically listen to their stories for as long as it takes, two or three hours usually, for them to tell me their story. And I would ask them things like, you know, if you could if you could decorate your cast to represent the person that you are, what would it look like? And these stories were incredible. I was just in awe. In the beginning, I was so arrogant. I thought I would I thought I would be able to choose the interesting stories. So I was select carefully selecting women that I thought would be really interesting, and that was that was absolutely wrong. Every woman was so interesting. And I, I again, I think you can I think you can generalize that to say that if you sit and spend two to three hours with anybody with an open heart and you listen, we're all so interesting. It's just that we so rarely take the time to connect on that level. So it's been a really amazing project for me. I then take these stories, and I turn them into first-person narratives of basically the beauty that I see within each woman. And at least for this first show, I'm going to be writing these stories on scrolls of paper that I then wax with encaustic, which is my medium. It's painting with, with pigmented beeswax. I'm going to hang these scrolls beside the cast so that you can see the woman, you can see her figure. And the figures look different, you know. Some women have reconstructed, some have not. Some are fat, some are thin, some are old, some are young. Um, and yet they're all gorgeous. They're all these beautiful casts that I've then painted with, with you know, vari variations of white and caustic. And they're all going to have these scrolls hanging beside them, which will be these handwritten stories on waxed paper. Um, just to really represent that we are more than we are more than the surface, and we are all beautiful. Well, that's that's a beautiful offshoot of holistic integrative medicine. It's really integrative art and integrative life. You you you've taken your art, your work as a physician with breast cancer, and your focus on owning pink, which is the color for breast cancer, and brought it all together. That sounds absolutely wonderful. It must be very rewarding. Well, it was only in retrospect that I was able to look back and realize, oh my goodness, it was the stethoscope with the paintbrush on it. Okay, that's right. <laughs> you know? That's great. <laughs> One more slash. Yeah. I know you have two books coming up. What are the details? Oh, well, the first one is about the type of art that I do. It's really a, a textbook or a how-to manual. It's called Encaustic, a guide, a, the complete guide to creating fine art with wax. And I interviewed 70 artists around the, around the world about how they work with wax and did studio visits and basically wrote up a how-to guide. So that one comes out this summer with Random House. And the second book is a very different type of book. It's called What's Up Down There? Questions You'd Only Ask Your Gynecologist If She Was Your Best Friend. And that clearly is uh, about vagina. It's not about art. So it's, But it's really about empowering women. It's really about um, educating women about their bodies um, to build that foundation upon which we can we can become more whole beings. That's a great title. I think that's going to appeal to a lot of women. It's going to really jump out at them. Thanks. Well, I wanted to call it Coochie Confidential, but the publishers wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, oh, as well. a, maybe a subtitle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or a blog you are. That's right. That's right. Well, Lisa, this has been a real joy talking to you and finally meeting you face to face. I know. And you've brought a lot of mojo, more joy into my day and I know into the lives of everyone who will be watching this interview. So thank you so much. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that the science from the universe and the synchronicities of the world brought us together, Phil. Me too. My pleasure. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.